Being imprisoned in the sun is an experience most ponies would find utterly torturous. The bright glowing orb was pictured by many to be made of swirling fires that would singe, burn, and utterly cremate anything that drew close to it. Yet to Celestia, the sun was as much a warm embrace as it was a prison. The magic of the banishment spell took everything that made the princess and mixed it with a arcane energy of the sun. It was like Celestia had been stitched into the sun, like a patch strewn onto a piece of fabric. She was part of it, but she was still able to identify where she ended and the sun began. She could only assume the same was true for Luna, which was why the moon took on a dark silhouette of a unicorn head. The sun was probably done the same, though no pony could look straight at the celestial sphere long enough to be sure. Escape from the sun was possible, but it took very delicate work and timing for an alicorn to free herself from such a prison. Celestia had already made a number of such attempts, feeling and probing the magic that held her, but an understanding of the spell would not be sufficient. She would need help. An alignment of the planets, stars, or some other celestial event that she could exploit and hold part of the spell open while she unlocked the rest. Yes, escape was possible, but it was tedious, a drawn-out game of waiting until such an event occurred. Unless she was freed by another. Suddenly, as Celestia was exploring a certain aspect of spell with her magic, she felt it start to unlock. However, it did not feel the same as when she'd been freed from the sun by the Elms of Harmony. When that had occurred, the elements had burst through the binding spell, washing over her and pulling her back to Equestria like an ocean wave pulling her into deep water. This time, the spell was unlocking itself. She wasn't being rescued, she was being released. Celestia could not ponder this for much longer, as the last of the spell evaporated away. She was free, and as the spell was designed, she found herself being carried back to Equestria. In just a few seconds, Celestia felt her physical bottle, body begin to take shape. She felt the gray ground beneath her hooves, smelled the clean, fresh air as it filled her lungs, and felt a cool chill of the evening on her coat. Opening her eyes, Celestia found herself smiling as she took in her surroundings. She was in a large, elegant room she didn't recognize. The stone walls, columns, floors, and ceilings were made of dark stone. The ceiling itself it was dotted with gemstones in the near-perfect depiction of the nighttime sky. She had materialized facing a set of large, blown-out windows, with traces of glass and metal clinging to the frames. Through those openings, she could clearly see the beautiful land of Equestria stretching out across the horizon. Sister! Celestia turned her head to the side, and her smile widened as her gaze met Luna's. Her sister had also been freed and was obviously a little surprised. That didn't keep Celestia from moving over and embracing Luna, like a worried older sister would. Luna, are you alright? Celestia asked gently. Yes, I am fine, Luna assured as she returned her sister's embrace. Were you the one that freed me? Celestia pulled back from Luna and shook her head. No, I had no hoof in this. It would seem we were both released early. You were, a voice reassured them. It was the voice that Celestia recognized. It belonged to a pony she wasn't sure she was ready to face. Why that sparkle? Celestia murmured quietly before both she and Luna turned. Twyla was standing just a few feet away from them. There was no pony else in the throne room, though the princess did take note of a pile of cushions and blankets and pillows in the center of the floor. I trust that it was you and your friends that defeated Nightmare Moon and freed my sister and I? No, it wasn't. Twilight replied. The same day you two were banished, Nyx took the Elements of Harmony away from me and my friends. I was trapped in the dungeon at the time, so they tried to use another mare as the Element of Magic. From what I've been told, it didn't turn out well. I would imagine it wouldn't. The connection shared between friends is what gives the Elements of Harmony their strength. It is along the lines of power and virtue are mixed and flow together. Still, if Nightmare Moon stole the Elements of Harmony, and you and your friends didn't defeat her, how are you able to free us? We didn't free you. Nix let you go. Luna and Celestia exchanged a glance with one another, both wearing expressions of confusion before they looked back to Twilight. Why would Nightmare Moon do that? Luna asked. 
Because she's not the monster you or the cult made her out to be, Twilight said firmly. Now, before you say a single word about her or what she's done, I have something I want to say. Something I need to say, and I hope you're willing to listen. I am, Twilight. Celestia answered, neither smiling nor frowning as she spoke. With that, Twilight began telling Celestia and Luna everything that had happened over the weeks they'd been trapped in the sun and moon, respectively. She held nothing back, speaking of both good and bad that Nyx had done, though Celestia noticed Twilight was focusing more on the good. All the while, Celestia listened intently, occasionally glancing over at Luna. Her sister's expression ran through a spectrum of emotions, shock, surprise, skepticism, and amazement. She, however, kept her face as stoic and unreadable as a blank piece of paper. She kept her word as well. She did not interrupt Twilight. She waited until her student was done. And only then did she speak. That. It's a very interesting story, Twilight. Celestia commented, keeping her voice flat. I am glad to hear that Nightmare Moon has come to her senses and agreed to assist in our release. However, I find it hard to believe she was so injured that she could not manage the spell herself. Well then, Twala began as she turned and trotted to the far end of the room. Maybe you should see for yourself. Then Twilight reached the stone room doors. She gently poked her head outside to speak to someone in the hallway. A few moments later, she walked back towards the princesses, while another pony limped in gingerly in her wake. Nyx kept her head hung low, trying to make herself as small as possible. She did not lift her eyes to meet Celestia or Luna's, content to stare at the floor while keeping twilight between herself and the princesses. Is... is she going to be all right? Luna asked, unable to keep herself from staring at the bandages wrapped across Nyx's body. Nurse Redheart says she should make a full recovery, Twilight answered, directing a glare at Celestia. But this should prove to you that I'm telling you the truth. I never meant to imply I didn't believe you, Twilight, Celestia corrected. I just found it hard to believe Nightmare Moon was in such poor condition. It would seem, however, you weren't exaggerating about her injuries. No. I wasn't. Twala continued. She maintained her firm tone, despite being in the presence of the mayor, who was both her princess and teacher. Nyx helped me free you. I couldn't have done it without her. She also wants to return Equestria to you. She renounced her title as queen over a week ago, and returned control of the government to the ponies you appointed. If that's true, then why did she not free us sooner? Celestia asked, unable to hide the skepticism in her voice. She doesn't want to go back to the moon. She was afraid that, if she released you, she may be imprisoned there for another thousand years. Celestia took in a breath, steadying herself before speaking. That may not be an unfound fear. Sister! Luna snapped, her voice echoing with shock and disbelief. After everything we've just heard, you aren't considering... I don't want to, Luna. Please believe me when I say that. Celestia interrupted. It would not be as long as before. She certainly does not deserve another thousand years. However, while Ponyville was saved, much of Equestria will be calling out for justice. It is our duty as Princess of Equestria to ensure justice is carried out. I'm not saying it is certainty, but I'm saying it will be what the ponies demand. No! Twilight snapped, stomping a hoof. I am not going to let you send her to the moon! Celestia took a step towards her student. Twilight. Shaking her head firmly, Twilight took a few steps back and ordered herself into a offensive pose between Nyx and the princesses. No. I won't let you touch her. If you have to punish some pony, then punish me! The room fell silent, and all three of the alicorns stared at Twilight with varying levels of disbelief. Twilight. You certainly don't mean. I do, Twyla replied, flicking her gaze to Luna before quickly returning it to Celestia. If Equestria demands that some pony be sent to the moon, then send me in her place. No. What of your friends? What about Spike? Nyx argued as she stepped out from behind Twilight. You can't abandon them all like that. Not for me. You don't deserve to be sent to the moon, Nyx. 
No pony does. But some pony has to go. Rather it be me. No, Nick said firmly. She stepped forward and put herself between Twilight and the princesses. My actions were my own. You don't know how much it means to me that you're willing to accept the blame. But I can't let you do it. I'm an alicorn. You are not. There's no telling if you'd even survive being banished to the moon. But last time, I survived. And I can do it again. But... Twilight tried to protest, only for her words to be cut off. Do you remember what you asked me a few hours ago? Do you remember asking me what kind of mare I wanted to be? Nyx asked softly before she bent her neck down, bringing her head near Twilight's. Yes. Nyx smiled and drew Twilight into an embrace. I thought of one more thing I want to add to that list. I want to be a mare who protects the pony she cares about. I've heard a lot of ponies, Twilight. Maybe not directly, but it's because of me that a lot of bad things have happened. I don't want to hurt any pony ever again if I can avoid it. But I want to do more than that. I want to make up for what I've done. I want to do whatever I can to make sure the ponies that I care about never get hurt. So that my friends and family can continue to live and be happy. Right now, Nix continued, it's more important that you are here for your friends, including Spike and Owlicious. You are also the element of magic, and if Equestria needs the elements for how many again, you'll be needed here. Nix extended her wings, brought them to Twilight, and held her more closely. And now, I think I'm ready to face this. Just let me take the blame, and I promise I can bear the weight. I can live long enough to fix what I've done wrong, to make up for what I've done. But I would never ever be able to give myself if I let you take my place right now. Twilight shook her head. No, Nix, you don't have... Thank you for always being there for me, Twilight. You're the best mother I could ever ask for. Nix whispered. She leaned in close and nuzzled the side of Twilight's face. Her tears streamed across Twilight's cheek, but neither of them complained. But I have to do this. With that, Nix pulled away from Twilight, turned to face the royal sisters, and sat before them with her head bowed in respect. Princess Celestia, Princess Luna, rulers of Equestria, regents of the moon and sun, I surrender to you. I have wronged you and Equestria. I know that there is no way to change the past, but what I have done can never be undone, so I await the justice befitting my crimes. All I ask is my final request is that you hold no ill will against your student or any ponies who were once poisoned by my magic. Lay all their sins and misdeeds upon my soldiers, and allow me to bear them myself. Let me defend them, and take the punishment they should not have to endure. Promise me this one thing, Nick said before taking a deep breath to steady her voice, and I will accept any fate, even banishment to the moon, without question. Are you sure about this, Nightmare Moon? Celestia asked, her voice barely louder than a whisper. Do you truly wish for us to lay all that's happened upon this? Even the things beyond your control? Upon your shoulders? Yes, Nick answered firmly. As an alicorn, I can bear the burdens no other pony can. I threw myself in the way of the Lupus Miger to protect Twilight, while the beast wounded me, I could have easily killed her. The pain I endured saved not just the life of one, but the lives all over Ponyville. It is far better for me to be wounded if it means some pony. Any pony can continue to live and be happy. I can be bruised, battered, and beaten, but as long as they are still breath in my lungs, I will continue to protect ponies. I will protect them because of what can kill them. I can survive. Because what hurts them is but a scratch for me. Because it's the one thing that I've been able to do right. Celestia and Luna glanced at each other, before looking back at Nyx. They were silent for a long time. Luna was unable to take her eyes off of Nyx's determined stare. Celestia, on their hand, noticed a small flash of light. It was quick, and it was gone before Celestia could even glance in its direction. Her gaze lingered for a moment trying to discern some clue of what she had seen. She turned her attention back to Nyx's gaze, which seemed to demand imprisonment on the moon. 
Nightmare Moon. Celestia began, her voice regaining its usual rigor strength. Though it pains me, you must face judgment for your crimes against Equestria and us, the royal sisters. This judgment, however, shall be deferred. Deferred? Nixon Twilight echoed in disbelief. Twilight has spoken on your behalf, but before proper judgment can be laid, more voices must be heard. So I will ask my sister, Princess Luna, to speak out to those other voices. I will ask her to find others to speak of what you have done here in Ponyville, and then I will entrust her to decide your fate. Really? Luna asked in disbelief. You, you trust me to do that? Celestia gave a nod. I do, sister. As Luna's gaze lingered on Celestia, a small smile formed on her lips. But as soon as she looked away, that smile faded, a more serious expression grew in its place. I accept the task you have entrusted with me, sister, and I will do as you suggest. I will go out and learn from Ponyville the kind of mare Nightmare Moon has been. Then I will decide the punishment, if any is needed. Can you at least promise me that you won't banish her to the moon? While that asked, only for Luna to shake her head. I am sorry, but the only thing I can promise is that it will be as fair as possible. If Nightmare Moon has done enough wrong to justify banishment to the moon, then that will be her fate. However, I will not ignore the good you say she's done. Twilight nodded, though the anxiety in her eyes made it clear that she was not entirely like the answer that she'd been given. She, however, did not press the issue and turned to confront Nyx, while Luna shifted her attention to Celestia. Where can I find you, sister, when I am out speaking to the ponies of Ponyville? Luna whispered so that only Celestia could hear. I would remain here at Twilight and Nightmare Moon, if only to make sure my student does not start to panic and worry about what will happen. Good, because I do wish to speak to you about this before I make my final decision. Still, that is for later. Right now, what I need to do is find a pony who can be honest with me so I can be sure that Twilight, saying, isn't being tinted by her care for Nightmare Moon. Then, sister, might I suggest a pony that you may want to speak with first? Applejack poked her head out from behind the tree, looking in the direction of the castle before smiling and ducking back behind the chosen haven. She was in the shade of a tree a few hundred yards away from the castle and couldn't help but stifle a yawn as she settled in for a nap. She had been working since the wee hours of the morning keeping the ponies of the castle kitchen churning out a bunch of goods, wholesome food. Still, after that one apple-bucking session, the farm mare was a little more aware of her limits. She knew she needed to get some sleep, just a quick nap. Yet the Gabby Gems article her sister and her sister's friends wrote still haunted Applejack from time to time. If some pony caught her napping, about half the time that pony would make some joke or comment about the article and she hated it. She wasn't a lazy daisy, like the article said. She worked hard. She gave her all whenever there was a job to do. But when work was done, she didn't have as much right as anyone else to take a nap. Placing her hat on the face to block the warm glow of a distant, constant, perpetual sunset, Applejack turned to settle into her nap. The grass beneath the tree was soft and the breeze was cool. It was a perfect place to doze off. That was, until Applejack heard the patter of hooves coming up beside her. Excuse me, I'm looking for Applejack. Bolting upright, Applejack scrambled to her hooves and quickly spun around. Now, before y'all start, I ain't laying down on the job or being a lazy daisy, I'll just... She began, ready to defend herself, only for her argument to falter when she realized who she was speaking to. P Princess Luna! I would never accuse you of being idle, Applejack, Princess Luna said coldly. From what I have heard of your work in the kitchens, there are few ponies who deserve rest more than you. If you would like, I can come back in a few minutes. Applejack worked on straightening her hat and brushing off a few blades of grass that still clung to her legs. No, I can't turn you away after you come out here to find me. It wouldn't be right. Especially seeing as since last I heard you were on the moon. Not really on the moon, Luna corrected before nodding her head. But yes, Celestia and I were banished until a little while ago. 
We were just released for Nightmare Moon, as if you can believe it. Well, honestly, I think I can, Applejack said. Still, shouldn't you and Celestia be up in Canterlot? I imagine you two have a lot of work to catch up with. From what my sister and I have been told by Twilight, our niece, Cadence, and her husband, Shining Armor, have been trying to put Canterlot's government back in order since Nightmare Moon stepped down from her throne. They have, however, only managed to keep the situation from degrading further. Celestia and I will need to return to Canterlot soon so that everything can be set truly right. Before we depart, however, there are matters that we must deal with in Ponyville first. Applejack cocked an eyebrow. Lack like what? Luna paused for a moment, glancing back towards the castle and picking her words carefully. Applejack, you are the element of honesty, correct? I reckon I am. Then I need you to tell me about Nightmare Moon. Tell me what you honestly think about her. And, if you have time, I need your help to find other ponies who would do the same. I reckon I can do that. Applejack said with a smile as she laid back down on the shade of the tree. But if you don't mind, can we just talk here? I've been on my hooves all morning. Luna shook her head and joined Applejack in the shade. I don't mind in the slightest. Normally, Nurse Redheart would have been the pony to tend to Nyx. She needed some of her bandages changed and wounds cleaned to make sure they didn't get infected. However, Luna and Celestia had come to a silent argument that they didn't want any pony to know that they had returned. At least not until they were able to decide what to do with Nyx. Thankfully, Nurse Redheart was more than willing to let Twilight tend to Nyx herself. Redheart was still busy helping the sick ninjured with Nurse Tenderheart, Fluttershy, and Dr. Stable. And she didn't have much time to spare. They didn't even ask why Twilight wanted to be the one in charge of Nyx's bandages. She just gave Twilight the supplies and a medical hoof book, which specifically detailed the proper procedure for cleaning and changing bandages. Nyx was laid out on her makeshift bed, though she would not allow herself to sleep. She was unwilling to lower her guard around Celestia despite Twilight's assurances. Still, the exhaustion of healing and a sedation spell by Twilight got the better of Nyx, and she drifted off to sleep just as Twilight began to change her bandages. As Twilight worked, Celestia stood by her side, offering what help she could. She held the materials Twilight needed and collected the used bandages and cotton balls as they accumulated. They needed no words and worked in silence for several minutes. Yet as Twilight was replacing the bandages on Nyx's side, Celestia chose to break the silence. She spoke softly as if her words were unwelcome in the quiet that had fallen on the room. Twilight, may I ask you something? Yeah. Twilight replied as she took some fresh medical supplies from Celestia's levitation spell. Who do you blame for what happened that night? Which night? The night the Children of Nightmare finished their spell. Celestia replied as she took some of the used cotton balls and deposited them in a paper garbage bag. Who do you blame for what happened? Do you blame the cult for finishing the spell? Do you blame me for taking Nightmare Moon away? Or do you place the blame elsewhere? Twyla placed the bandage over the wound she had just cleaned and used some medical tape to secure it to place. I don't blame you for what happened. And while they were the ones who caused most of this, I don't blame the Children of Nightmare. Not completely. If anything, I blame myself for letting it all happen. I don't know if I could have convinced you that you didn't have to be afraid of Nyx, but I don't think I can ever forgive myself for not putting up more of a fight. Is that why you were willing to take her place? Asked Celestia. I promised Nyx that I wasn't going to let her let you take her away from me again. And I meant it. Twilight answered as she turned her attention to the next of Nyx's bandages. She carefully peeled it away and began to inspect the wound, make sure it was peeling properly. Twilight, I'm sorry about what I had to put you through that night. Celestia said softly as she took the spent bandage and passed Twilight the disinfectant and fresh cotton ball. I did what I felt I needed to do at the time, but the ends did not justify the means. I can understand if you do not wish to forgive me. Twilight sighed, took the cotton ball she was offered, soaked it in disinfectant, and began to clean Nyx's wound. You're right. I honestly don't want to forgive you for that night, but I do forgive you. You do? Lusty asked as she passed Twilight a fresh bandage. I do, Twilight assured her. 
Every pony needs to be able to give, be forgiven. Because we've all done things we wish we could undo. So, she was able to take the elements of harmony from you without even lifting a hoof? And then she just let you go? Applejack nodded, obviously a bit embarrassed. After talking for a time under the shade of the tree, the pair had gotten up and started walking towards the town. She and Luna were now getting close to Ponyville. It wasn't like we made it difficult. I reckon that, as long as we found another unicorn who was good with magic, we'd be able to beat Nightmare Moon. Trouble was, the only one who could find was an annoying show pony named Trixie. She's not as good as Twilight, but we hoped it would be enough. Still, even after all the magic mumble-jumbo, it didn't look like we left a scratch on Nightmare Moon, and we were plum exhausted for our efforts. Well, it is true that the magic is an important part of Element of Harmony. It is but another source of power. The strength of the Elements of Harmony come from the ties that bind, for it is those with the power of the virtues you and your friends possess come together. Object held her head to one side in confusion. And the ties that what now? I don't recall us being tied together when we first tried to use the elements. Luna chuckled as she came to a stop. Never mind, Applejack. Now we're getting closer to town, and there's something I need to do before we go. Do you mind stopping for a moment? Not at all, Sugar Cube. What you gotta do? First, I have one more question to ask. If you were given the responsibility of deciding how Nightmare Moon was to be banished, for what she had done, what would you do? Applejack blinked a few times, then looked away from Luna, scratching the back of her head. Well, shoot. You had to go and ask me something hard like that. All I ask is for your honesty, Applejack. You don't have to explain why. I just need to know what you would do. Luna assured her. Applejack pondered the question for a few seconds, continuing to scratch the back of her neck before eventually sighing. Well, I reckon I don't know. She did do some pretty nasty things, but Nightmare Moon has also done more than her fair share of good, especially during the monster attack. Personally, I'd be inclined to go easy on her, but that's because she's settled any debt she had with me. But honestly, I'm probably not the pony to go asking about this, Applejack admitted. I only desired your honest answer, and you've given it, Luna said with a thankful smile. Now I need to speak with other ponies about Nightmare Moon and I would not like Equestria to know my sister and I have returned just yet. We've been lucky we haven't passed another pony on the road, but I need to keep myself hidden once I get to town, at least from the general public. Well, I reckon you know better than me what's best in this situation. Thing is, how are you going to go be hiding yourself? Can you transform yourself like Nightmare Moon? Luna nodded. I could, but it comes a matter of who to change into. If I turn into a resident of town, then we may run into them and that would cause certain difficulties. If I were to shapeshift into a new pony, then we'd run the risk of Pinkie Pie trying to welcome me to the town. Yeah, even with a town like this, Pinkie Pie would want to throw the new pony a party. Now Jack agreed. So, what are you gonna do then? Luna smiled as her horn started to glow. For a moment, nothing seemed to happen, but then she slowly faded away like a ghost before disappearing entirely. It was a sight that left Applejack a bit bewildered. And she looked around and put a hoof out where Luna had been standing. Ow! Oop! Sorry, princess! Applejack apologized, quickly drawing her hoof back. It is okay, you did no harm. Applejack leaned to one side, as if adjusting her perspective might make it possible to see where Luna was standing. So, are you just gonna stay invisible like that and follow me into town? Yes. When you've found some pony you want me to talk to about Nightmare Moon, then I'll need you to pull them someplace private, where I can make myself visible again. Oh, and it's best not to talk to me directly when I'm like this. Ponies might think that I've lost my marbles. Applejack chuckled. Luna joined in the short round of laughter. Yes, that would be good putting it bluntly. Well, it is kind of weird knowing I'm being followed by an invisible princess, but I reckon you know what you're doing. Applejack mused as she turned and continued to walk towards town. Now, I think I'm going to show you to Rarity first. She's the only one of us that Twilight told the truth to about after she found out Nightmare Moon, because she needed her help in Nightmare Moon's little disguise. And then please, lead the way.
Hey, Rarity, you home? Applejack called out as she held the door open. Right here, dear. Rarity answered back. She trot out from the back room with the spools of cloth folding in her magic. I'm just making some blankets and the like for the ponies stuck living in the castle. The blankets they got from the guard barracks keep them warm, but they're made with such horrible itchy cloth. I don't know how these ponies have been getting any sleep, so I decided I'm going to use some of the old fabric that's just been lying around at the back to make some blankets. I can't use it for dressmaking anyway. Why can't you use this fabric for making dresses? It looks fine to me. Applejack asked as she approached Rarity and looked over the spools of fabric. It's a matter of quality, Applejack. Rarity explained as she set the fabric down. The thread counts on these bolts is far too low to be proper, fashionable dressmaking. It was a little mistake by my supplier, one that they've rectified by sending me the correct fabric and letting me keep these. I'm just glad I have these to use for them. They've been cluttering up the back room for ages. Still, I doubt you came in here to listen to me talk about fabric. No, I didn't, Applejack said. I got some pony that needs to ask a few questions, if you can spare some time. Rarity grinned. Oh, I love chatting while working. But may I ask who wants to ask me questions? That would be me. Luna replied as she lifted her invisibility enchantment. Rarity visibly jumped at the sound of the third voice in the room. Her eyes went wide and her mouth hung open and her vision locked on her unexpected guest. Princess Luna is in my shop. Applejack took a few steps back and used a hoof to hold her hat on her head. Uh-oh, princess. You might want to brace yourself. Luna glanced at Applejack and cocked an eyebrow. What for? Princess Luna is in my shop. Princess Luna's in my shop! Rarity repeated, talking faster and faster before she broke out into a sprint. She galloped about her shop, flying magic in all directions. As she adjusted, beautified, and cleaned up the shop room of her boutique at speeds that would impress even Rainbow Dash. Applejack and Luna had to jump out of the way a few times as a great number of things floated around the room. Within a minute of feverish, panicked, and magic-driven cleaning, the shop was utterly spotless. Rarity skated to a stop in front of Luna and did her best to keep herself from panting as she bowed. Your Highness, it's a privilege to have you in my shop. Even though I do wish Applejack would give me a little warning beforehand. Sorry, Rarity. Applejack apologized. But she just kind of wanted to drop by. She dropped in on me, too. She only got back from the moon a little while ago. Rarity perked up her ears of curiosity. You only returned recently. How? It was Nightmare Moon that released my sister and I. Luna answered. Rarity couldn't help but smile. Well, that's good to hear. I was expecting it would happen sooner or later, but I'm surprised Nyx didn't wait until her injuries had healed. The poor little deer had got beaten up during the attack. You knew Nightmare Moon would release me in Celestia? Luna questioned. Well, I can't say I knew for sure, Rarity admitted as she batted at her hair. It was a nervous habit of hers. But, oh, how to put this best? I can say that I... Knew there was a very, very good chance that she would do it, and I hoped that she would. But you didn't know for certain. If I may be so bold, Princess, in my personal opinion, you can never be absolutely sure about anything, at least when it comes to ponies. What makes you say that? Applejack asked. Why, personal experience, of course, Rarity said with a toss of her head. Remember when I made you your gala dress? I was absolutely certain you'd all love the first set of dresses I made, but, well, you recall how that turned out. Applejack laughed. Yeah, I still can't figure why I thought galoshes would go with a gala dress. You're a practical pony, Applejack. So you consider fashion a function of a form. You thought it might rain, so you still want to be prepared. Rarity assured her friend with a gentle smile before turning her gaze back to Luna. Still, that wasn't the first time I've created something that I thought my client would love, only to find out that their opinion of my work was quite the opposite. And over time, I've learned that you can't be absolutely sure of anything that comes to ponies. Luna gave an approving nod of her head. That is a good lesson. Still, while you say you can't be absolutely sure, I would like to know how you would answer that one question, Rarity. And what question would that be? 
If you were given the responsibility of deciding how Nightmare Moon was to be punished for what she had done, what would you do? How would you punish her? Or would you simply forgive her for all that she's done? Luna asked, in the serious tone in her voice, causing the silence to fall in the shop. Rarity remained quiet for several moments, pressing her lips together as she contemplated the question. She began to frown a little, as if she didn't like the answer that was forming in her head. In all honesty, princess, I'm torn. There's part of me who would want to forgive Nyx. Besides Twilight, I was the only pony in town who knew what, or rather who, Nyx really was from the start. And even then, I found her so darling. She'd bounce over to my shop from time to time, eager to be taught a lesson about being a proper mare, and I was more than willing to teach. But, Rarity continued with a sigh, she also locked up my sister. She locked Sweetie Belle in a cold, dank dungeon and worried me sick. My parents came and told me why Nyx had done it, and that she would be released safe and sound, but I still lay awake many nights wondering if Sweetie Belle was safe. That, and I suppose I can't ignore all the ponies across Equestria who want some justice. So I guess, I guess my answer would be that Nyx probably needs to be punished. Perhaps put in jail for some time. Rarity concluded. She then scrunched up her face as she found her own answer distasteful. No, jail would do no pony any good. If anything, we'll harden Nyx like some kind of common criminal, and that's the last thing we want to happen. Perhaps community service would be a better fit. Yes, Nyx could work on repaying her debts to society, but she wouldn't have to be locked up in a horrible jail cell. I wouldn't, however, have any inclination as to what you could have her do or for how long. I'm a dressmaker, not a judge. Rarity concluded. I appreciate the fact that you have been unbiased, as a judge would continue. Luna commented, as she smiled. But perhaps you would like to talk a less serious discussion. And I know more about Nyx than just what she's done recently. You mentioned that she used to come over to your shop and learn things from you. Would you mind telling me about that? Rarity perked up almost immediately, grateful for the conversation, having shifted to a more pleasant topic. Soon she was telling short stories, but energetic stories, about the times Nyx had come over to her shop, either with Sweetie So, I would ask you three, what would you do if the responsibility fell to you to decide Nightmare Moon's fate? Would you offer forgiveness, or would you say she needs to be punished? And if so, what is befitting of her crimes? After leaving Rarity's boutique, Applejack and Luna had gone back to the castle, with little searching, Applejack had found Rainbow Dash, Fluttershy, and Pinkie Pie. And she guided all of them to the castle's empty guard towers. There, Luna revealed herself, and as she expected, the three ponies began barding her with questions about how she escaped the moon. Luna cut through the questions gracefully and managed to ask her own, leaving Rainbow Dash, Fluttershy, and Pinkie Pie glancing between one another. Well, um, it may just be me, but, um... I would forgive her, Fluttershy admitted quietly. Rainbow Dash flirted her wings and looked at Fluttershy in disbelief. After all she's done, you can't seriously say you'd forgive her. And then may I ask what you believe should be done, Rainbow Dash? Luna asked. Hey, don't get me wrong. It was cool how she helped us out during the attack, but I saw what her eternal night was doing to a lot of ponies. When Applejack said we should try and find Trixie, I was the one that flew out of nearby towns to see if anybody had seen her. I gotta tell you, there were a lot of ponies there who were taking a whole turtle night thing pretty hard. Would you, if you could, banish her back to the moon then? Rainbow Dash rubbed the back of her neck. Well, not exactly. I mean, that's kinda harsh. It would probably be better just to lock her up in a dungeon or something for a few years. Years? Fluttershy's voice in disbelief. Rainbow Dash, you only lock a pony up for that long if she's done something really horrible, like setting another pony's house on fire, or, or, deliberately hurting another pony. Dash's lips tightened, preparing the coming argument. And bringing two weeks of endless night to Equestria isn't really horrible? Well, okay, that is pretty bad. Fluttershy admitted weakly, before forcing some strength back into her voice. But she hasn't hurt any pony. I mean... She did have the chance to hurt us after we tried to use the Elements of Harmony with Trixie, but she didn't do anything. She didn't lock us up, she didn't hurt us. She just let us go and took the Elements. But what about Twilight? Dash argued. Nightmare Moon kept her locked up in the dungeons for weeks, and Twilight didn't do anything wrong. 
Oh, and by the way, I still say we should have used some of my awesome plans to get her rescued. Applejack. Rainbow, those plans were half-baked and you know it. Applejack snapped. Pinkie Pie nodded her head in agreement. Yeah. And half-baked plans are like half-baked cakes. No pony likes them because they're all soggy in the middle and... Anyway... Dash continued, cutting Pinkie Pie off before she could go off on one of her wild tangents. While I admit Nightmare Moon did a lot to help Ponyville, she also did a lot of things that hurt all of Equestria. Even if you only made her stay in jail for one minute for all of Equestria, it would still add up to years, I think. Fluttershy shook her head firmly, and while her voice was its normal quiet volume, she was still showing more fight than she usually did. No, 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 no. You punish bad ponies, but you forgive good ponies who make a few bad decisions. Nix isn't a bad pony. Fluttershy, she threw Equestria into what could have been an eternal night. She locked up Twilight and Three Little Fillies, and she stole the Elements of Harmony from us. She banished Celestia and Luna to the sun and moon. Dash said coldly. That's a lot of bad divisions. But you're ignoring all the good she's done. Fluttershy pointed out. She brought back the sun. She saved Twilight. She defended Ponyville. She's earned our forgiveness. But Fluttershy... Dash tried to argue, only for Fluttershy to shake her head furiously from side to side. No. She deserves to be forgiven. Besides, have you thought about Twilight? How do you think she would feel if Nix was locked up for years? Dash lowered her ears while her strong stance deflated. I didn't think about that. Rainbow Dash brings up a valid point, Fluttershy, Luna said, defending Dash's side of the argument. There are many in Equestria that undoubtedly want to see Nightmare Moon punished, if only for the crimes of the laws of four. And for stealing the princess's pet phoenix is probably against the law too, but Celestia forgave me for that, Fluttershy argued with a rare firmness in her voice. Nix is not a bad pony. She just made a few bad decisions. And she's fixed everything she did wrong without any pony asking her. We should forgive her. One who wields unmatched compassion, wishing only to grant forgiveness. Luna commented as she looked over at Fluttershy, before she turned her face Rainbow Dash. Balanced by one who embodies the loyalty, not only to her friends, but all of Equestria. I'm beginning to see why you ponies were able to bring such power to the Lens of Harmony. Luna looked at Pinkie Pie, who was wearing her usual smile. We, however, have not heard your opinion yet, Pinkie. Would you forgive Nightmare Moon or see her punished? I'd forgive her! Pinkie Pie chirped up without a second thought. And may I ask why? Well, if I locked her up or banished her, then Nixie couldn't come for a super fun, horrific thanks for saving Ponyville from a bunch of scary monsters party! You planned a party for her? Dash asked. Pinkie Pie nodded. You bet! After all, my special talent is throwing parties and making ponies happy. That, and I wanted to see if Nix would try turning me into a cake. Luna lifted an eyebrow. Turn you into a cake? No, oh, yeah. See, Nix turned Fluttershine to a tree, and that was cool, and I wanted her to turn me into a cake. But then Twilight took Nix and Way for lunch, and I figured... Now that Nyx is all like Nightmare Moon, she has to have even way more wonderful of magic, and turning me into cake should be easy peasy. But wouldn't you be worried about some pony trying to eat you? Pinkie blinked a few times, confronted by the aspect of Kate and defecation she hadn't considered. I never thought about it like that. Ha! Huh. I wonder what it tastes like. Rainbow Dash couldn't help but snort. She put a hoof on her face and did her best to keep herself from laughing, while Luna, Fluttershy, and Applejack looked at Pinkie Pie with utter confusion. After leaving Pinkie Pie, Rainbow Dash, and Fluttershy, Applejack had let Luna stay in the castle's guard tower while she brought other ponies to talk to Nix. Some spoke well, and at times Luna requested that Applejack find ponies that would speak poorly of Nix, if only so she could hear a range of opinions. Like Rainbow Dash, there were ponies who felt Nyx needed to be punished in some way, though a majority of them felt that the thing they needed to do was be tampered with mercy. Cheerily was among such ponies. She thought the situation she would... a student breaking the rules of a classroom. The rules applied to every pony, and thus every pony needed to accept the consequences of their actions. 
There were also those like Fluttershy who wished only to offer Nyx leniency and forgiveness. Ditsy Doo was almost as adamant as Fluttershy was that it'd be better to forgive her. Finally, there were those who were in no way swayed by what Nyx had done, who blamed her for the monster attack. They believed that banishment to the moon was the just reward for the pony who had usurped Equestria's throne. Those ponies also made it a point to mention that unless Nyx was banished, nothing was stopping her from trying to take over Equestria a second time. After one such harsh pony had said his two bits, Luna thanked him and allowed him to leave. As he departed the tower, Applejack glared coldly at him, while making a mental note to charge him extra the next time he came to our apple stand. Well, he was certainly adamant, wasn't he? Bullheaded if he asked me, Applejack retorted with a huff. His opinion is still valid, Applejack, Luna lectured, even if you do not agree with it. I ain't saying his opinion isn't valid, I'm just saying he has rocks for brains. Applej Luna laughed a little. Well, I suppose you are allowed your opinion as well. Still, I do believe I have heard enough. Thank you for your assistance, Applejack. Ah, shoot. I was glad to help. If you don't mind me asking, have you decided what you're gonna do? No. Luna admitted with a sigh. If anything, I feel I am more unsure than I was this morning. Applejack cursed under her breath and kicked the dirt at the floor. Well, shoot. I couldn't be more help. No, Applejack. You were very helpful. The fact this decision has become difficult for me is a sign that I have come to understand Nightmare Moon. I just... don't know what I'm going to do. Well, I'm sure you'll think of something, after all. Hey, Applejack! After hearing her name, Applejack snapped her head around and looked towards the steps of the guard tower. Four fillies came running into view, each wearing a Cutie Mark Crusader's cape. Applejack, Sweetie Belle, Scootaloo, and the group's latest addition, Twist, scampered up the tower barely giving Luna time to make herself invisible. Well, hey there, sis. What are you four doing out here this late? Applejack asked. Pinkie Pie told us we should come talk to you. You were asking a bunch of ponies about Nyx? Apple Bloom answered. Applejack chuckled and nodded her head. Well, I reckon I was. Well, then why didn't you come talk to us? Scootaloo asked. Yeah, we're Nyx's best friends. Why wouldn't you want to come talk to her? Sweetie Belle added. Sorry. I guess y'all just didn't cross my mind. Applejack said before she glanced to where Luna had been standing a few minutes ago. I reckon I should go ahead and let you four get your word in since you went through so much trouble chasing me down. Now, what would y'all want me to know about Nyx? With nothing but a single question, the four fillies were off. They talked about everything that had happened about Nyx as if they'd always been thinking about this very question the whole time they were looking for Applejack. They told of how good she was at games, how smart she was, how she and Twist helped the other three with schoolwork when it got hard, and how awesome she was at magic. It was an endless stream of things, each some small event or nuance that the filly of the four called their friend. Through it all, Applejack felt the smile on her face slowly getting larger. And, Apple Bloom tried to continue a few minutes later, looking at her friends anxiously. I can't think of anything else. I can think of something, Twist said cheerfully. Nix is a really good friend. Personally, I reckon that all you little fillies are really good friends, Applejack stated. And thank you for running me down and telling me all this. But it's getting late. You four should be getting back to your families. And that includes you, Apple Bloom. I don't want to get back to the farm and hear from Big Mac that you were late getting back. The four fillies hung their head and did as they were told. They made their way up the stairwell that led down from the tops of the guard tower. Applejack stood and watched the four cape-wearing crusaders leave. And once she was sure the fillies were out of earshot, Applejack gave her hat a nudge as she smiled. If you want to know about Nightmare Moon, Sugar Cube, those are the four fillies that'll give you the honest truth, Applejack said, assuming that Luna was still hiding invisibly nearby. The others and I, we know her because of Twilight. Those four, they are real friends. And real friends are the ones that... Celestia's horn began to glow gently as she shut her eyes and stretched out her magic. She'd been watching the cock carefully, and when the time was right, she reached out for the sun. 
While she and Luna wanted to keep the return a secret, it was important that the sun and moon were put back on schedule. The princess's bond with the sun made setting it as simple as reaching out to an old friend, perhaps a child. The sun would, on some days, be willing to slip off into its slumber beyond the horizon. Other days, it would fuss and refuse. Every day, Celestia found a way to coax it down so that the moon would rise. She had done it for a thousand years, and did it again tonight. Even if she could feel the lingering magic of Nyx, who had tended to the sun in her absence. The sun was willing this evening. It was ready for the rest, being in the sky for so much longer than usual. It began to sink below the horizon with only the slightest guidance. Celestia's attention was drawn away when she heard the doors of the throne room open. For a moment, it looked as if no pony was there, but she could hear hoofsteps against the floor. Once the door closed, Luna slowly bled back into visibility and crossed the room to sit by her sister. I see that they are sleeping, Luna whispered as she motioned to Nyx and Twilight. Nightmare Moon needs her rest, and Twilight has been so worried I wouldn't be surprised if my student hadn't exhausted herself. Though in honesty, her concerns are what we might do aren't unwarranted. Despite our power, Celestia, we are still just ponies, and at times we make mistakes just like any other. Our emotions get the better of us, and we make bad decisions. It was my jealousy of you that, a thousand years ago, led to me to making the worst decision of my life. And once that decision was made, it took the elements of harmony to set things right. And that does not excuse my actions. I never said it did, Luna corrected. But you know you did something wrong, sister, which means you can work to make it right. Celestia nodded as she watched Luna raise the moon as her sun continued to set. Perhaps I can. So, you were successful? I was. I learned much about both the filly she was before and how Nightmare Moon is currently viewed by the residents of Ponyville. Have you decided what you're going to do? I believe that I have. Luna answered gently as she grew quiet. I think it is for the best, but I can't be sure. I actually wanted to talk with two more ponies first before I really decided. And they are? I need to speak with Nightmare Moon. They're only after discussing this with you, Celestia. You've been with Twilight and Nightmare Moon all day. Surely you've noticed a few things. A cold sternness took shape in Celestia's face. I have. Much like Twilight and her friends, I am one of the few who has seen the true Nightmare Moon. I have seen the mare that I was forced to banish. Who desired the Night Eternal. And who banished me to the sun during the summer, sun celebration. I knew the monster, I feared her. Yes, I have seen the true Nightmare Moon. Celestia continued before a smile started to form on her lips while her eyes softened. And while the alicorn who lies in the room is the same mare, she is no longer a monster. She is the same in form, in power, and in history. But she has also changed. She is not like who she once was. And I can now truly see that for myself. For all you have come to know Nightmare Moon as she is seen by Ponyville's sister, I have come to know how she is by seeing the pony that cares for her the most. Celestia said, looking over her shoulder at the sleeping form of Twilight Sparkle. To my faithful student, she has only known Nightmare Moon by another name. Through her eyes, she sleeps beside a mare that is not a monster and was never a queen. To Twilight, Nightmare Moon, now Nyx, is a daughter, one that Twilight is willing to do anything to protect. I have honestly never been prouder of my student. Celestia heaved a weary sigh. Though perhaps it is better to say my former student. I cannot be sure Twilight will ever look upon me as a teacher again, considering what has transpired between us. I think, sister, that an action is only unforgivable if we choose to take it that way. Luna corrected softly as she leaned by Celestia's side. By calling something we have done unforgivable, we will be unable to try to change it. Let us make the mistakes we've made define who we are even if it's not the pony we want to be. But everything is forgiven in time. Any pony can earn redemption. They have to be willing, and sometimes they just need the help, and a lot of time. But anything can be forgiven. Lusty bent her head down, bringing it next to Luna's as she smiled. Forgiveness. Truly, if that were meant to be a seventh element of harmony, it would be the element of forgiveness. It would work to earn my forgiveness for what I've done. You will not work alone, sister, Luna replied. 
It was my past, my bad decisions, and my wrongs that turned me into Nightmare Moon. This Holocaust inherited all of my sins, whether she wanted them or not, and it is a burden that I intend to, at least in part, take back. Nyx glanced anxiously over her shoulder. Twilight was being shown out of the room by Celestia, who whispered something to her before sending her outside and closing the door. Celestia then sealed the door with both physical locks and magical barriers, something that made Nyx swallow nervously before turning her head forward. The bed she had been recovering on had been removed. She was standing where it had once been, and Princess Luna stood before her. Luna, despite being smaller in stature than Nyx, stood with her back to the room's broken windows, with her wings spread and a firm, serious expression on her face. In all, Luna gave off the aura of leadership and power. Every part of her body language shouted that. At the moment, she stood not as a younger sister or a friend. No, she stood as a royal sister of Equestria, as the regent of the moon, and was the one about to pass judgment on Nyx. Nightmare Moon, you stand accused of high treason against Equestria. You have committed crimes against the ponies of this kingdom as well as my sister and I, the high princesses of Equestria. You have brought about two weeks of constant night on this land. You unjustly imprisoned one adult mare and three young fillies. Your agents of the Children of Nightmare spread fear throughout the land and almost succeeded in executing an innocent unicorn. Above all, you usurped Equestria's throne by imprisoning both me and my sister in the moon and sun. Do you deny these crimes as I have spoken them? Luna asked. Nyx hung her head as everything she had done was verbally thrown in her face. No, I do not. Before I pass my judgment, Nightmare Moon, I would ask you one question. Are you willing to answer it truthfully? Nyx replied with a simple nod. Earlier, just before you surrendered yourself to Celestia and I, you said something to Twilight Sparkle. What did you say? I simply told her what I had decided, what kind of mare I wanted to be. And what kind of mare are you? Who are you? Are you Nightmare Moon? Or Nyx? Are you the filly Twilight took care of, or the mare that I used to be? Nyx swallowed, glancing over her shoulder at the closed throne room doors, beyond which she knew stood Twilight Sparkle. I cannot deny my origins, or my past. I was born of a spell meant to resurrect Nightmare Moon, in power, in form, in memory. I'm the same mare you once were, and in truth, if it were not for that past, I would not have had the courage or determination to protect the ponies I care about. Nyx then smiled, and turned her eyes towards Luna as they filled with a firm conviction. But I am now much more than your twisted shadow, Princess Luna. I am Nyx. And I learned what it was like to be cared for by a mother, to have friends and play in the sunshine. As Nightmare Moon, I was born of your jealousy and hatred. Yet I was given a chance to know happiness. That has left its mark on my soul. I am both Nightmare Moon and Nyx, because they are one and the same. They are both me, but the name I choose to go by is my own, Nyx. She fits with the stomp of her hoof. The last echoes of that proclamation lingered in the air before dissipating in the night. Luna nodded in understanding, and shut her eyes as she listened to the last traces of Nyx's words. She then took a deep breath, and when Luna opened her eyes next, both they and her horn were glowing. Then, Nyx, I lay my...